Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Um, welcome to our talk. I'm Gail McCommons, and I'm joined by David Jakes. And today we'll be sharing um, uh, about our inner source portal using Backstage that David created for our team. So a little bit about our team. Um, I am in the Comcast Open Source Program Office, the OSPO. The Comcast OSPO was founded in 2017. We're currently a five-person distributed team. We're distributed globally across Philadelphia, San Antonio, Denver, Chennai, and Silver Spring. We support over 9,000 technologists and over 2,000 project repos on github.com and over 50 inner source projects. Personally, I've been working with open source throughout my career and has spent the last four years in roles fully focused on open source. Um, prior to Comcast, I worked at the Linux Foundation as a program manager where I managed open um, operations for five open source projects. And today I'm with the OSPO at Comcast where I lead open source compliance. Um, David Jakes is a principal software engineer at Comcast. He's a part of the discovery team serving as a developer advocate in the developer experience portal extensibility program. Um, following a reorg reorganization of teams in 2022, both the OSPO and David's team began to sit within the same umbrella organization at Comcast, and that helped open the door for new collaboration opportunities between our teams. And that led to the creation of our new dashboard that we're going to share today. Um, before we get into that part, I want to share a little bit about our open source and OSPO journey at Comcast um, and just kind of share where we are in our maturity model. Uh, much of the history that you see here did occur before my time at the company, but the key milestone is when our OSPO was founded in 2017, and that's when we really began to formalize um, standardization around our processes and how we build community and how we do our work. Uh, our inner source journey began in 2017, and all of our inner source initiatives uh, kind of reside within the umbrella of the OSPO. A few of the reasons we kept the oversight of inner source within the OSPO and why it works for us as a model is it because it helps us streamline our processes, um, share practices across projects, and help enable identification of good candidates for open source. The idea of keeping open source with the inner source within the OSPO is a practice that Comcast borrowed from how PayPal uh, managed their inner source practice area when we got started. And now it's pretty common as a standard way that um, companies and OSPO structure their inner source work. Um, when we propose inner source to our internal communities, we try to provide a clear picture of the benefits that come from inner sourcing. So those being transparency, collaboration, innovation, and accelerating development. And if you're here today at Intersource Summit, you're probably very well acquainted with these benefits already. Um, this is something that we make sure that we include that when we're sharing how it can benefit our teams internally and when we're promoting it um, for projects that are coming up. Within the Comcast OSPO, we have an established governance model for intersourcing projects and technologies. So here you see it starts with a consultation where we share standardized templates and begin evaluating feasibility for intersourcing. In the early stages of developing our model, uh, we determined that we can't go it alone and we had to expand our mindset. And so members of the architecture, open source program office and security teams were bought, brought together to create a guild. Um, the guild formed to help create the inner source structure and guidelines and help us at a baseline for governance and standardization. Now we're in a place in our maturity as an OSPO that the guild um, no longer, we no longer have a need for a formalized guild. We found that our processes have come to a point that they now scale to the needs of the business. One of our uh, future items that we begin discussion around uh, are kind of two areas of the life cycle of the inner source project, one being at what stage do we look at a project and assess if it's a good candidate for open source? And then two being, um, when at what are the points for determining a project has reached its natural end and should undergo a sunset process? So those are in our future roadmap of what we want to do to help continue growing our inner source governance model. Um, when a project first comes up for open sourcing, it typically follows five general stages. The first of those is we determine if the project is an appropriate fit for open source. Um, when we do that in a consultation, we ask a few questions up front. One, those are some of those questions include: Do you have teams identified downstream that can benefit from this project? 
Are your engineering initiatives supported by leadership? How does this project fit into the organization strategy? Um, why does the organization want to adopt InterSource? And so by understanding the project and the goals for the organization that we're working with, it will help us understand whether the project will benefit from having multiple teams um, engage the development, and it will be a strong fit for InterSource, or this project might be best suited for deliverables within one team. Um, and we do this just to have an initial moment of assessment to help ensure we're having healthy projects that we can help um, grow and guide through uh, the process to help promote it internally. The key step in this kind of these five stages that we're going to talk about today is the release stage. So this occurs after we've worked with the team and we've made sure, hey, this is a good fit for InterSource. We want to go forward with this. Um, we've made sure the repo is open, security checks are done, documentation is created, the product's approved, um, everything has been done and we're at the final stage. As I mentioned before, we've, ha we've had a, um, a dashboard previously where we, in our early stages of InterSource um, development, began posting our metrics and having our um, data of how many stars, how many repos we had, how many um, contributions or PRs there were to each repo. And that was something that we had where we store our data. Um, our challenge was that it wasn't easily discoverable. We had a link to it on our website, but it, there wasn't a natural way to get to it. Um, and that brought us to an inner source marketplace. Um, and building it, um, we had our dashboard, it shared key data elements. It was a great first step, but it also wasn't very great to look at necessarily. And we wanted to improve discoverability for our internal community. We wanted to have um, an organic landing place for it. And this is where our collaboration with internal teams really became key for us. Um, David Jakes, who you'll, share, you'll hear from shortly, um, partnered with our team to create a new and improved portal um, on a, a marketplace that we create, it was created on Backstage. And so David, if you'd like to um, begin sharing what that looks like for us. Yeah, thank you, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so as you can see from the slide, our, our developer experience portal is called DevHub. Um, and we're gonna talk more about that as we go forward. But uh, first let's go back before we go forward. So slide. Yeah, so this is how I view the, the lovely, uh, inner source metrics portal as it existed beforehand. I mean, Gail and the open source office team were really out in front of developer experience before most anybody else at Comcast. So, you know, they drove into that developer experience and, you know, their portal was really a good example of that. Um, it was fairly basic. I mean, it was, it was HTML and it had some JavaScript to pull the data. Um, it, it did what it needed to do. Um, as Gail mentioned, I mean, it really was about telling people, you know, what the key metrics were on the projects that were inside of the inner source umbrella. And so that is exactly what they wanted to share with their, their users. Um, but as Gail mentioned, it was kind of low visibility. So uh, if you know, you know. Um, yeah, so slide. Uh, talk a little bit about our organization itself. So at some point along the way, Comcast, you know, decided that building you know, this shared developer experience organization, you know, be a strong solution to help Comcast deliver on innovation, you know, with speed and with quality. And um, uh, where'd I go? I got, just got lost. Um, but, sorry, my notes just disappeared. There they are. Um, yeah. So as Gail mentioned, the OSPO and in my discovery group, you know, we're both parts of the same DevX organization. Uh, obviously you can see our, read our mission statement here. And we'll slide. Thank you. So my team, even before the DevX organization uh, started, we knew that we wanted a developer portal. And we started from scratch. We thought, you know, we could certainly write all this stuff ourselves, right? Um, it was originally built to serve specific needs, mostly around you know, some, some security needs for our organization. But as things happen, you know, the organization evolved around us and we wanted to grow it into a more, a much larger scope project. Um, and it's the kind of the classic challenge of, you know, changing the tires while you're driving down the highway. Um, but at some point, you know, that kind of the reality set in about that. And while part of it does remain and it's still in use today and it's, it's driving value for us, 
it was kind of clear that, you know, in the new mission of, you know, being a front for this developer experience, you know, from cradle to grave, we needed that new face. And uh, turns out, as we were, uh, slide please, Gail, sorry. Um, backstage was a thing. Um, as we're kind of showing off the functionality and we're telling people what our vision was and our roadmap, we kind of happened upon backstage, which, you know, being new to the developer portal space, maybe other people already knew about it, but hey, we found it. And we saw that it really closely, you know, functionality wise, it aligned with what we want to do on our roadmap. So obviously in the open source space, you know, it's easier to accelerate. Um, to, to build off of, you know, stand on the shoulders of giants, as it were, and leverage the open source offering. So the project itself, you know, the developer experience portal, you know, really took, took off right there. Um, so if you jump a slide, please, thank you. So yeah, I'm gonna do a quick disclaimer. I'm not doing a te technical deep dive onto the backstage side. Um, the team itself has made some customizations to backstage of course to make it work with our existing systems at comcast i'm not sure if the team's going to bring some of that those changes forward uh, i think they're exploring that possibility uh, they were at uh, backstage con last week and the uh, presentation that ryan emerly gave is, is linked here hopefully that comes through on the slides okay um, so yeah so the, he sh talked a bit about what we're doing custom wise on backstage but i'm not going to cover much of that here slide all right, so um, one of the first features that we as the, you know, as the discovery team, as the developer experience portal team, we wanted to add to the portal was Intersource. It was, is it wrong to say sexy? I mean, it was, it was buzzworthy, it was wonderful. We thought, hey, let's do that. We can bring a quick win into the portal and kind of drive that collaboration. Um, interestingly enough, uh, as the organizations were shifting, we didn't realize that Intersource, the OSPO team already had a, a portal for Intersource. So we were out there selling our ideas, telling them how great this Intersource portal was gonna be. And then the OSPO came to us and kind of tapped us on the shoulder and said, what are you doing here? Um, and then they showed us their portal. And so really the partnership was born at that point. And it's wonderful. Um, it's been a great experience personally, um, professionally. I think there, our OSPO team is, is very strong and nice people and that's a bonus. Um, so our revamp version is, is actually a backstage plugin. So it takes that isolated cabin that I, is nice, um, but it really brings it downtown to where all the foot traffic is. That's kind of what we, we want to do. We want to um, leverage Intersource and we want Intersource to be able to leverage us. So if you hit the slide. Um, on the developer side, you know, from our perspective on the developer portal side, we win. Um, we get to be the home for this well-respected OSPO team and they're, you know, they're a pre-existing portal. You know, we didn't have to reinvent any wheels. We just had to um, lift and shift almost, at least from the data side. Um, on the inner source side, you know, we can put those inner source, um, those flows, those processes, those ideas in front of the application teams. Um, and so at the, the end of the day, we're, we're really trying to do a few things. Um, and some of these are a little fluffy, but that's fine. We're, you know, we're trying to increase the discovery so that the application developers know what software might already be in the toolbox in, inside Comcast from both upstream and downstream. So there might be some libraries that are inner source that they could take advantage of. Um, we want to increase the reuse so that we can, you know, make the, the whole delivery process faster. And, you know, if we do it right, higher quality as teams work together and look at each other's code and contribute to each other's projects. Um, and then we also wanna you know, increase the collaboration, just generally speaking, to you know, enable the development teams to spend more of their time and more of their effort outside of the silos that were mentioned in the previous talk, which is great. I mean, it's true, they, they do live in silos. We, we live in silos, I'm a developer. Um, but it's definitely good if we can spend more of our time outside of those silos in shared projects. Uh, slide. So yeah, a roadmap, we kind of feel like we're just at the beginning of this. Uh, we started working with OSPO in I think it was late spring and uh, the portal came up, um, I think I wanna say July timeframe, but it's been out there for a while and we've gotten some pretty good feedback, um, but we do feel like we're at the beginning of this journey. And um, we've got 
limited resources. Nobody is nobody's full time job is the intersource portal right now. Um, but I think we're going to use the feedback that we get from our customers. What what would they like us uh, to add? Uh, what would the OSPO like us to add as the OSPO changes? Um, maybe we integrate open source flows, um, both who's using open source projects, and we can add that to the developer portal, and maybe participation, who's contributing to open source projects. Um, we definitely want to help the, the, the inner source teams um, take advantage of DevHub, and we want to help the DevHub teams take advantage of inner source. So it's really those synergies that we're trying to drive. I think the feedback has been positive. You know, both you know delivering value to the to the developer platform because we added inner source to it and that's fairly high profile. We like having that inner source inside of the portal, and also the way you know to provide exposure to the inner source teams that are out there, so that any developer coming into DevHub will see what inner source projects are out there, what they can contribute to, um, and what they can uh, leverage. And I think slide, I think that's that it. We're open for questions.